talk about how you turn puppies into beer, okay? Just, I gotta ask that question. No, we're not, there's no recipe that's gonna be talked about here, but I, you'll, you'll see, the next slide explains it. So free and free software. I, I feel like there's an echo. Is it okay? You guys can hear no problem? It's just me who's having a problem. Okay, so um, free, free software. We get excited by free software, right? It's always cool to have, but what's the word free mean? Well, it used to mean when you got free software, you'd think free like free beer. You know, that's a good thing, right? I mean, I, I, for most of us, I hope, right? Free beer, if you don't have too much, probably a good thing. Um, but I think the meaning has changed and now it's more like free like a free puppy. It's not like you just get the puppy like a beer and it's done. It's you've got to raise that puppy, the puppy's going to eat a bunch of the stuff in your house, it's going to ruin some of your furniture, you're going to have to learn to potty train it, it's going to make a mess of your life. Maybe you'll be happy at the end, depends on what you think about dogs, but that's up to you, but it's not the same meaning as a free beer. So, so what's happened and how do we get back to free software acting more like free beer again and not so much like a free puppy? So just to talk about this real quick, once upon a time we got all excited by free software. Right? We, I, anyone who's got hair like mine, there's a few of you guys out there, right? You remember the shareware days and the uh, trialware days and the freemium. Uh, oh, the freemium is still happening out there, but it was simple and it was understandable. You take some software, maybe you make a donation, maybe you don't, maybe you share it, maybe you don't. Maybe you pay for a pro version, or maybe you don't. It was easy. We got it, and we said, oh, cool, this is free. Let me click here. Um, starting about five years ago, it got complicated, and we started clicking on software to install free, and you got all kinds of good things on your box. Um, this my, my mouse doesn't work here, does it? But it, yeah, it does work. Look at that. So this was an actual screen of toolbars, right? Someone had all kinds of toolbars. Now, toolbar days are almost over, but we remember these days, right? And how many of you had to go clean up one of your family members' machines or something like this, right? I don't know where they came from. <laughs> they just appeared one day. I don't know. I, I never clicked on anything, I promise. So, <laughs> so you get these toolbars, um, your search changes, the homepage changes, and they say, oh, I don't know how that changed. How, how could that possibly change, right? Uh, Pop-ups all over the place. Click through, hey, what about this? What about me? Have you looked at this deal? Have you seen this? And no one remembers how any of this stuff got there. This is the world today of free software. Right, you guys, you know what I'm talking about, right? No one's surprised by this. Yeah, 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 this is the world we live in. It sucks. So this is the way we treat, when we look at an install script or when we're about to click on something, they put up that first window, we pull out our magnifying glasses these days and we work our hardest to make sure that we unselect all those opt out things so we can install just the software we want and not everything else. Yeah, no, or I'm not the only one who does this, right? This is my picture of a, this is what a security researcher looks like. Though so this guy has hair, so he must be using Camino. So, <laughs> so that's, that's really exciting, you know? You got to him in time, I appreciate that, all right? But we still get fooled, right? I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I install things and I'm sure that I unchecked everything properly, but damn it, where did that, where did that pop up come from? How did I get that, how did I get on my box? whatever out there. Well, there's a reason for this, right? There's a reason all this stuff happens, and that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about, because we wanna stop the free puppy syndrome from happening to free software and get back to the beer. <laughs> so, I'm gonna walk through an example of how the software monetization ecosystem works today out there. And so, what, what you're gonna learn a bit about is what are carrier apps and installers and search offers and advertisers and the role that the AV industry plays and the platforms like the browsers and the searches and the operating systems play in all this. So I'm gonna just walk through a quick example so you understand what the flow is. It should make sense about what's going on. So we start with a carrier app. A carrier app is the app that everybody wants and nobody wants to pay for. And I use an example here of KM Player, but it might be Java, it might be WinZip, it, might, it could be anything. It's something that, or VLC, there's all kinds of software out there People want, but the only reason it's popular is because it doesn't cost money. If it costs money, there'll be another free one that takes its place as the most popular piece of software. So I use KMP, um, KM Player, I think the original name was Korean Media Player originally, but now it's on over 300 million devices out there in the world. It's an extremely popular software. And Carrier App wants to get paid at the end of the day. They're not doing this for the for the beauty of the world. They're, 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 they're trying to monetize this cool product that they built, but they know they can't charge money for it. So they, that's the carrier app. That carrier app is gonna get wrapped into all kinds of things so that 
they can offer it for free to the world and still get paid for it. Yeah, make sense? Kind of like watching TV, right? TV, we watch it for free because it got wrapped with a bunch of commercials. There's a bunch of offers out there for us. We get excited because we got a free TV show, we didn't have to pay for it, and yet we had to put up with commercials breaking it. That happens in Canada too, right? You guys have commercials in TV? <laughs> no? Yeah, 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 we all have it, right? So, even YouTube has commercials. Right? Everybody has commercials these days, right? So, so it's the same model with software today, right? So you have the carrier, which is what people want, then there's an installer, and the, and the installer is the one who ends up paying this carrier for the right to carry it. So K, KM Player Inc. or KMP Media LLC, whatever their real name of their company is, um, they get paid by installers who bundle KM Player with some offers, and then, and then they offer to pay back, in this case, KMP Media, they offer to pay them back money. Now, I was talking with, a, with an installer yesterday about this, and he showed me his rates, what he pays KM, KMP Media in order to do this. And he pays, in the US, he pays $1.34 for every install that takes place. And that drops all the way down, and I think in the UK it was 78 <coughs> cents, Canada was 50 cents or something like that. It drops all the way down to a penny in, in Luxembourg and, and some other country. So it depends on the country, depends how much money you think you can make, but they, they basically they bid on this and they, and they pay this money back to to the company for installing the software. So essentially, if you think that you're making at least 10, I think India was 10 cents, right? For, so just to give an idea of the ranges of money that you can make, depends on the country, depends on how much you can bid versus others, but there's a rate sheet that KMP Media publishes and they say, this is what you owe me if you want to distribute my software. So the installers pay that money. So, and this is this example, can you see that on the screen here? Yeah, that's just an example of a Google search for KMP or KM Player. And what comes up, the number one thing that comes up is a KM Player site, which doesn't have a download button on it, but they have a list of partners who you can also install from. Or you can, or you can look at all these little starred entries here, KM Player download, download KM Player free, KM Player free download and software, download from File Hippo. So I chose File Hippo, because I wasn't just gonna choose the first one, so I picked one here, File Hippo there. You see that there, that little red on the bottom says, secured by Avira, so it was nice. So I knew I could trust it because it says on the site that I can trust it, so that was very nice. So I clicked on the download button there to see what would happen to my, because this is what we all do, right? We trust when we see there's an AV product on the box, right? Of course, right? Because everyone tells the truth on the net, right? That the way I've learned that, right? So the offers are the software that comes with it. Now these are people who have figured out how to monetize and how to make money off your computer, but they need distribution. So they want to team up tightly to a carrier app who everybody wants and doesn't want to pay for, but they, they say, I can make money off your box, so as long as you get me there, I can convince the user that I can make money, or I can trick them into paying me money, or I'll somehow make money off your machine. Yeah, so th these are the advertisers. And usually on the box, there's one search offer, so someone's affiliated with either Google, Bing or Yahoo in this part of the world, or it might be Yandex, or it might be, uh, well, it depends on where you are in the world, who you're gonna be affiliated with. Right there. And they're gonna offer either a toolbar or to change your search settings or some search protector or something on the machine in order to get that asset converted. And they're getting paid by Bing, Yahoo, Google, Yandex, whoever is paying them, by do whoever it might happen to be who's paying them to make that happen. So there'll be one of those, and there'll be one or more software offers that get attached to this. Uh, and sometimes you have one that doesn't have a search offer, and that was this example here. There was no, I, I installed this thing on File Hippo because it was protected by Avira. Maybe that saved me from the search offer. And when I went through the next processes, it looked really good until I got to the screen is choose the options you want to install. And you can't, I think you really can't see it here that much, but this first one says it's called KMP Faster. Well, that's a cool name. Wow, it makes my KMP faster. And it says partner and friends before. So wow, of course I want that. So I, I hover over this and it and it shows there's a little license agreement where you can read one line, right? License agreement for and it lists some other funny company name here. Simplitech Productions. You love thing. But if I move my mouse down to go read that, it disappears. I can't go read it. There's just no way you can read the license agreement and see what you're agreeing to. You can just accept this software or not. If you uncheck that, it, then you get warnings that say it's unrecommended. Are you sure you want to proceed? And you go back and you check it again. Oh, well, I want KM Player to work, and this makes it faster. Let me do that. Well, it turns out what KM Player, what KMP Faster is, 
is something that tells you the health of your computer and all the problems you're having. And I, I, I actually let it run longer. It told me I had five major issues that I was going to die if I didn't get fixed right away. But in the meantime, immediately it told me, oh my god, my computer's in trouble. It's at 177 degrees. Do something right now. Click here to go oh, fix no. that problem. Amazing. Anyway, but, but these guys have monetized, right? Because at, at some point, the way they make their money is some user is going to go click on something and say, oh, I better go fix that. Let me go do that. And they'll go pay to go get something fixed. So they wanted, and look, and they're not all bad. There's a lot of really, really good offers out there in the world. I just happened to fall into, I, I, I didn't search for a bad one. I just, and I, who knows if these guys are bad. Maybe they will fix my machine and make it run better. It was a brand new Windows 10 installation, so I don't know why, why I had all these issues. Maybe they wanted me to install you know, Mac OS or something. I don't know what they wanted, but something <laughs> was supposed to happen, right? But anyway. I, they're not all bad. There's good software out there. There's really good offers that are being made here. The thing is, the aggressive guys are making all the money in this industry. So the more aggressive you are, the more money you can make, the more you can bid to pay File Hippo so they can get their money back for paying the POC 34 to these guys. So you understand this, this mode here? You have the carrier, you got an installer who bundles together the offers with the carrier app, and then you got the offers who, who are trying trying to make money off your machine. There's a lot of good offers such as AV software is very commonly an offer. Like you'll see when you install um, like Acrobat, you get an offer for antivirus right, on the machine, right? Or if you install Java, you get just a Yahoo if you want to change your search provider, nothing else. So there's a lot of people that are innocuous, not causing a lot of harm, but then there's a lot of this crap that goes on in the machine. And that's the crap of the ones we're worried about because it's such an interesting, good theory, but in practice, it doesn't work out that well. So the theory says, yeah, you can mix carriers with offers. That'll work fine. But it really works well when it's a well-curated deal. So if you have a one-to-one -one relationship between, for instance, Java and Yahoo or Java and Ask.com, and, and they've, they've talked to each other and said, OK, how are we going to make sure we're not hurting each other's <coughs> brand? How do we not get too aggressive? Things work nicely. But when you move to a more uncurated deal where, for instance, your search provider, whether it's Google or Bing or Yahoo or whoever says, oh my god, I need market share or I'm dead because my advertising networks are dead, so I'm going to pay any affiliate. As long as you convert customers, I'm paying you a bounty of $50 or whatever it happens to be. And those machines just convert, I'll give you a share of the revenue I make. That starts making things go crazy because these guys have too much money to make, so they get more aggressive to make more money. And then the second thing that's happened is the uncuration of an exchange. So when there's an auction house or a bidding house where you say, hey, you know what, I'm going to bid. I promise to give $3 for every time my software gets installed on that machine. File Hippo gets excited because they're paying a buck thirty-four to get it installed. They're making 3 bucks. They think they can convert those. So the most aggressive person who guarantees the most money is the one who gets served up on the customer's machine. So there's a big race to the bottom of aggressiveness where you get the crappiest applications that cause the most damage to your system who can extract the most money are the ones who get advertised the most. And the good software, the stuff that you actually want and would be happy to accept on an offer, never show up because they can't make enough money because they're not doing aggressive behavior on your machine. So quick race to the bottom. The bad guys, a few bad guys can really mess up, have messed up this whole market for everybody so far. You're all following. Yes. OK. So you've heard of the tragedy of the commons. This is more like a, uh, that's a horrible contrast on that screen there. <laughs> but what I see is a goat and a pig. <laughs> Sorry you can't see that <laughs> on my screen. Um, but the tragedy of the commons is basically where I, I think the example came initially from there's a common field we can all put our sheep in or a cow's in, and everybody can go use that field and feed their cows. So if you think selfishly, what's the best way I can use that field? And you just think about yourself, nobody else. The best thing for you to do is get as many cows as possible so you can get the highest percentage of grass all right, off from that common field so I can go consume it for myself. The problem is if you do that, so does your neighbor, because he wants to get his fair share. And if everybody acts in just their self-interest, they're going to destroy the common field and it will have no grass because it will be barren and it won't produce and nobody can benefit and the common good has been lost. And that's the tragedy of the commons. The tragedy of the commons applies to this model as well. 
the few people who act in their pure self-interest of just how can I make the most money as quickly as possible so I can retire next month, right, are able to destroy the entire software monetization industry if they're not controlled. And a good example of someone who suffered from this just recently is a company called Driver Support. Driver Support is five minutes, okay, I'll go quick. I only have a couple slides. Okay, Driver Support is one of these, um, is, is one of these companies who who provides care to people who don't really understand computers that well, maybe they use an older versions, and they have to keep all their device drivers up to date for their old printers or their old scanners or whatever. They got about four million customers out there. They're pretty confident that once people discover them, install their software, they love them, they upgrade to a paid model, everybody's happy. Um, they were trying to get better distribution. They decided to become an offer with some other software, and within a week they were flagged as, as a unwanted software. Never had this problem before, and all of a sudden the AV companies started, and once one detected them, all of them started detecting them, and they started getting wiped out of their four million user customer base, and they lost many, many customers, and that caused more customer support calls. It's like, hey, where's my driver support? Where did you guys go? Give me my money back, and they got scared, and they actually pulled back, and they said, whoa, we don't even know how to play in this game. We need a distribution, but we just can't make it work in this space here. We'd love if we could do this. But, so what should they do? They could go sue the AV vendors, try and get their money back. It usually doesn't work, right? I mean, the AV vendors are pretty, they make the case, hey, somebody said it was bad, so I detect you, you were bundled with bad things, you must be bad. At least you're doing business with bad people, so you're bad, All right? That's a real easy answer for an AV company to make. Um, they could go to the dark side, which a lot of these companies do, and they can work with installers who say, I promise that I will evade any AV who's on your box, so you get a chance to get installed, and I'll give you a guarantee that you get only 10% of your installs removed by AVs, right, as an example. And that's the beginning of that tragedy of the commons. The third step is they could actually help to save their industry. And the good news is driver support actually decided to take that path along with a bunch of other companies. Starting in 2014, Microsoft, the AV vendors, Google, and a bunch of the installers got together and founded this Clean Software Alliance. So uh, I was part of that founding of that, and I was kind of excited about this, um, where everybody agreed to a set of shared guidelines that were acceptable on both the AV side, the platform side, as well as the, uh, the software monetization side, saying we promise to follow these things. If you AVs, we promise to follow, and if you let us through, everybody's happy. So we all agreed to this. We thought it was an awesome idea. Um, it's just slow setting it up. So we formed the organization, Clean Software Alliance. It exists out there. They have a web page. This is proof that they really exist out there. But they haven't figured out how to enforce it or how to make sure that when you promise and say, yes, you can trust me because I'm CSA certified, how do you actually make sure that's real? That's the little missing piece. And we don't want everybody just claiming, I'm CSA certified, trust me, because then it wouldn't mean anything. Three minutes, I'm going. All right, so here's how we're making it real. Three minutes, I can get to my punchline. So we, we're coming up with a way to trust the applications and be able to put on a box a trusted seal, um, and that's what App Esteem is all about, this new company um, that's gonna be doing this. They're helping them, the software monetizations actually self-regulate themselves and the AVs to trust them. We're gonna, we're gonna seal applications based on a set of guidelines. If we need to have more guidelines because the AV vendors don't wanna trust these, we'll add more in there. But essentially, we're asking the software vendors to link with a, a self-regulating library that will monitor their behavior and remove them if they turn bad and form this safe haven where everybody who's in this group can then focus, can actually make money and participate in a way that customers are, are happy with and everybody can go focus, the security companies and the platforms can put all their attention on the guys who won't be clean uh, and work with them. There's some steps here, please wrap up. You should see these, these are nice. What, what's the next one, by the way? The like, get down, down, damn it, shut up. <laughs> I'm, plugging you. Right. I'm wrapping up. And so in conclusion, no, okay, let me just, real quick, I'll go through the slides. I'm not gonna read you the words here. We're asking the companies to go build their app and get it sealed. A clean world means beautiful things for everybody. Most importantly, customers can install with confidence and they don't have to go act like this anymore, right, as they do this, because um, we want to make um, software desirable again and get back to the beer state. See how I put the logo there? Isn't that cool? All right, little, little nice thing there. So we're going with a beta version of this this summer. We have a few installers. Two installers have signed up and said, oh my God, we want to do this. 
They're bringing a bunch of carrier apps and offers with them. We'll have this thing rolling this summer. There's a big CSA announcement going out in June about this, and we plan to roll this out worldwide in fall. Uh, we're going to start with Windows, moving to mobile advertising, and maybe we'll even produce some beer at some point in the future. <laughs> anyway, that's the talk. Thank you all for your time. Appreciate it.